Sprozlik and happy feast. So today we celebrate St. Herman of Alaska, the great patron of our church and the great patron of Orthodoxy in America. Uh, St. Herman was a simple monk. He had gone to Valam Monastery uh, uh, with Elder Nazari, who had, St. Nazari now, who had been requested to uh, uh, rebuild Valam, which was had basically uh, turned into a ruin um, after being after the marauding Swedes, um, and uh, so they, uh, so so the community arrived from there. Um, this made, among other things, uh, or rather, Saint Herman was a spiritual brother of Saint Seraphim of Sarov, because Saint Seraphim had uh, they both been together at Sarov under Elder Nazari. Saint Herman was uh, was a rather remarkable young man. And uh, he was a man of great, uh, great stillness, of, of great inner, inner peace. And so he very quickly matured to the point where he was, give, being, he was able to receive the blessing. Not just where he was given the blessing, but where he was able to receive the blessing to go off and be a hermit. And so he, he built a hermitage about a mile from the main monastery. Um, it's now called St. Herman's Field. For a while, it was the helicopter pad. Um, uh, but it's this, this huge field, and there's now a church there uh, to commemorate St. Herman. Um, and he lived there in, in solitude as a hermit, going into the main monastery for feast days and receiving his, uh, his needs from the main monastery. Uh, when he, uh, he was called by Elder Nazari, um, thanks to the Metropolitan of St. Petersburg, to, be, to go and to uh, be a missionary in, uh, in America, in Alaska. And so uh, he and uh, nine other monks made their way across Siberia. If you can imagine, it took a whole year. They went by... Uh, they walked part way, they went by cart, they went by boat, they went, they used all the, they probably had to go also by uh, sled over the snow. Um, it's, I don't know, seven or 8,000 miles um, without a car, as you can imagine, or a train or a boat. Um, all the way to the Pacific coast, and then they got on a ship and, and went to Kodiak, where they basically found a pile of lumber. Um, and uh, at least there was the pile of lumber. So they built a, mo a monastery there, um, the center of which is uh, Holy Resurrection Cathedral, which still exists, um, and is, which is kind of the very, the very heart of the, of the town of Kodiak. Um, and this became the missionary base, the missionary center. And the, uh, the monks went out from there uh, to, uh, to baptize, to teach, to preach, to disciple, uh, to bring with the specific goal of bringing Americans to Orthodoxy. Now the Americans that they were uh, working with happened to speak Aleut and Yupik and Tlingit and uh, Athabascan and other very uh, various native languages. Um, uh, only later would they would they embark on the mission to uh, uh, to work on the English speaking people. But uh, but the Americans were still a long way off um, uh, from there. Saint Herman once overheard a conversation between a couple of the hieromonks who were arguing. Who would get to be the apostle to which people? Uh, there were, one, one was arguing he wanted to be the apostle to the Yupiks, another to the, uh, to the Athabascans, another to the Tlingits. And he was very edified by that. Of course, a couple of, a, at least one of those Hiram monks ended up being a martyr. Um, uh, and so this, this, the Russian mission itself uh, was, uh, was, a, was a really amazing thing. 
because here in the midst of this very rough frontier town, um, where they had to had to deal with uh, fur traders and trappers and the uh, and the and the Native Americans who worked for them, uh, as well as various and sundry uh, uh, European uh, vessels that would that would come through the the British, the Spanish, the French, and the Americans. Uh, at the turn of at the turn of the of the nineteenth century, still there was a there was a there was a great fervor uh, among among those monks among those missionaries to establish orthodoxy in America. The monks actually were quite scandalized by by the Russians, and they went on strike. And they refused to, to minister to the Russians at all. Uh, they wouldn't do marriages, they wouldn't do baptisms, they wouldn't do funerals, they wouldn't do anything because the Russians were so badly mistreating uh, the native peoples. And uh, after a couple of years, the, the head of the mission uh, and one other priest monk uh, went back to St. Petersburg to make a report to the Holy Synod. Of course, that's a long process. Uh, but they did return, but their, their ship sank within sight of the harbor, and all were lost. St. Herman, because of all of the turmoil going on, decided to go return to his eremitic way of life, and so he went across the harbor about seven miles to Spruce Island, a kind of medium-sized island where he uh, landed at what, what is called now Monk's Lagoon, and he walked inland a little bit um, uh, away from the tsunamis um, and, uh, and, and established a hermitage there in the forest. Uh, and there he lived for the next 37 years. And he ministered to the native people, the people who lived on that island, the people who would come to him from other uh, from other islands, from other settlements, from Kodiak, and, uh, and he loved them, and he cared for them, and he served them. He particularly served and, and ministered to the children. Um, at that time, uh, uh, as each new ship of Europeans would come through, more European diseases would come through, and there would be epidemics that would devastate the population. Sometimes 25, 30, 40 percent of the population would die. And you know, and 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 we think we have a pandemic. And that and that within a month. Within a month. If you can imagine successive waves of that happening. So this was uh, what it did do. It left orphans by the hundreds. And so St. Herman would care for them. Um, he set up an orphanage. He set up a school. Uh, he ministered to them. He's particularly remembered for, for making cookies for the children. And he, and he lived there maturing in wisdom and entering deeper and deeper into the life of prayer. One of the, one of the things that uh, you can still see in the museum, well, it's actually not the museum, it's the archives in Kodiak of the American mission, is St. Herman's copy of the Philokalia, um, which is huge. It weighs about 25, 30 pounds. Um, if you can imagine, uh, trucking that all the way from um, from Valam all the way across Siberia. And yet um, that book was so important to him because it shows the way of, of spiritual growth. And, and St. Herman followed that. And he lived according to it. And you can read his letters uh, back, to the, back to Valam, back to the elder um, for spiritual direction. He was a man who sought salvation. He sought peace. He sought reconciliation. He sought to reconcile uh, parties that were at enmity with one another. 
Uh, he's, he no. besought people to forgive one another, and he, and he tried to love everyone who came to him unconditionally. And that is the real model of what a Christian is supposed to be. Not just what a monk is supposed to be, absolutely, but what a Christian is supposed to be. One who cultivates that spirit of peace, one who cultivates that spirit of love and forgiveness and, of, uh, and likeness to Christ. St. Herman died uh, full of years, uh, surrounded by his, by his beloved children, um, all of the, all of the uh, native peoples of the area. Um, he died on the 27th of November, um, and it took until uh, uh, the 25th of December uh, for, for a priest to be able to come and to, uh, and to do his funeral. Um, the weather in August, the, the, the sea is like glass up there. It's hard to imagine it's the North Pacific. Um, other times of year, it's not quite so smooth, you know, with 30 foot waves. <laughs> so if you can, uh, uh, so if you can imagine uh, it, the kind of isolation that he lived in. But I think the most important thing to remember about St. Herman is that he really cultivated that spirit of peace and that spirit of love. He did not judge. He did not condemn. He forgave everyone and he encouraged that forgiveness in every word, in every deed, in everything that he did. How can we also cultivate that spirit of love, that spirit of peace, that spirit of forgiveness. I think it's incumbent upon us to remember how critically important it is that we do not judge one another. And we must not judge one another. In fact, we must not judge anyone, whether they're, uh, whether they're an Orthodox brother or sister, or whether there's somebody, you know, that, that we don't know, or somebody whose religion or politics we disagree with, or whatever it is. We must not judge, and especially we must not condemn. You know, each person has to answer to God. That person will answer to God for their own works. As, as for us, what can we do but pray for them? What can we do but love them? What can we do but strive to, uh, strive to cut out any kind of condemnation that we have in our hearts uh, for anyone? And if somebody has sinned against us, if somebody has, uh, has hurt us, we need to forgive them unconditionally for the sake of Christ, as he forgave us unconditionally. And this is the way to cultivate the spirit of peace within us. On one hand, uh, you know, it, it really helps to engage in contemplative prayer and in, you know, and as a chasm and all of these other things. But unless we stop judging, unless we stop condemning other people and looking at other people and, and, uh, and, and, uh, making, you know, making all sorts of uh, uh, criticisms and all of this other stuff. It doesn't matter how much religious stuff you do. I want to emphasize that. It doesn't matter how much religious stuff you do. If you're judging and condemning and criticizing people, you will never have peace in your heart. The only way is to keep watch over our minds, to keep watch over our thoughts, and to keep, and especially to keep watch over our words. Even if, even if our judgment is based on truth and it's somebody, something somebody objectively did to us. And the other thing, of course, that goes along with that is and that the fathers emphasize continually 
if we're conscious of our own sins, how can we ever judge anyone? If we are conscious of our own sins, how can we ever judge anyone? We can't. So brothers and sisters, let us emulate St. Herman, the patron of our community, who showed us the way to attaining the spirit of peace, who showed us the way to attaining to likeness to God by becoming precisely one whom that uh, uh, description of, of a mature Christian uh, that uh, was read in the, in the apostle uh, this morning, to be characterized by love, joy, peace, faith, patience, long-suffering, and self-control. And if we do that, we will not be far from the kingdom of